Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to another edition of NBC's 10 Count. I'm C. Fall, but on today's episode, I am talking to Marco Stunt. How are you doing today? I am doing very good. How are you doing, my friend? It's a great day. It's beautiful outside. I'm talking to you. Can't complain. Not sure why I pointed at the ceiling because I can't <laughs> see the sky, but I know it's nice out. Oh, what a day. What a day. And I'm just so happy to have you here because I think people want to know your perspective on a lot of things happening in the world of wrestling. But first, I want to know about you. How did you get into wrestling? Was it a friend, a family member, channel surfing? So uh, I, I actually didn't know that I could get into wrestling. I just thought that was a chance thing. Like one day you go to WWE and they hire you or something like, but uh, I found out that there was a show going on not too long, not too far away from where I lived, which is like 25 minutes away. And uh, I took my two best friends and uh, we had the most amazing time at this show like it was nothing like we had ever experienced before like there was no guardrails we were just sitting real close to the action and uh i thought it was insane and amazing like i told my friends i was like we should definitely see if they train people and uh we we did it we uh, we went up and we asked the guys and they just kind of were looking at us because they didn't normally train people but they were like hold on let me let me go let me go talk to some, some people and so they came back and they gave us like a, a beginning price and uh they started training us like two weeks later and uh I went on from that I started training with this one guy and it didn't work out but uh luckily there was another guy that picked me up and guided me along and his name was Motley Cruz yeah or or David Price some but uh he, uh, he's who I give credit to for getting me into the business, for sure. I, I like that name, Motley Mot Cruz. That, that, <laughs> that inspires me in my brain, like so many rock and roll bands being like, oh, what's your name? My name is Guns in Rosses. Like, just, <laughs> just start adding, just start making up last names through old uh, 80s bands. I like it. I like it a lot. His, it, his, his story to me was that the band was not a thing when he came up with the name or actually his mom she he said his mom came up with the name mm. but you know yes you know. i think uh one time i might have coined the phrase hangry and said i made it up and then uh that's which is obviously not true um but uh, yeah <laughs> i swear i've met people who are like i invented hangry and i'm like mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, me, I, me too i've also been to the moon a couple times so you know, but <laughs> that's interesting that you, you started out that way. So you blindly went to a house, not a house show, a, a local show, mm -hmm. and that's what got you hooked. And, and so obviously your journey continued on because eventually when AEW opened up, you were part of the, you know, like the initial roster. And how did that happen? Because obviously that's a dream scenario for a lot of people to be such a young age like yourself getting signed to a company that's just starting, but has a huge backing of money. Yeah. Um, so, so that's still nuts to me in a way, I guess. Um, I, uh, I was doing some indie circuits around Tennessee and Indiana. And uh, I did this, uh, I was doing this one specific uh, promotion called Southern Underground Pro SUP. And uh, they're based out of Nashville. So I was doing that IWTV gig for a minute with them and they were like kind of new, but had a good amount of buzz for that area. And, mm -hmm. you know, they had a, some great people on the roster and I had a blast doing it, but uh, I ended up doing this tournament called SCI, uh, but it was the future showcase. So it wasn't quite the main tournament. It was like a, it was like a tournament for people that were coming up, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up winning that. And while I was there, actually, for the tournament, I got a message from Brett Lauderdale, who runs GCW, uh, Game Changer Wrestling. And he was like, hey, uh, we've we got this event coming up, um, and I wanted to know if you want to be a part of it. I mean, he, he first told me who he was and everything, just to clear clear that part. And, like, I, when he told me he was with Game Changer, that, like, blew my mind because they're – 
in my head, they're like top tier on the indies, you know? So I'm like, how would I fit in in that in any way? Like I'm from Mississippi. I, I, I'm just doing the Southern state stuff and he wants me to come up to New York. But, and then he, he's like, Hey, this is the event. And he sends me the flyer and it's actually the flyer for lost in New York, which is, uh, was like the, one of the bigger, biggest shows going on at the time in the indie world. Uh, and so when he sent me that, I thought like, well, okay, this is a joke now. I was like, this is real, was, but, uh, it, it turns out it is real. It was real. Um, me, my dad and my brother drove up. 17 and a half hours about two weeks later and uh i had this crazy moment where uh during the show i came out of the crowd and uh i got in the ring like i was a fan or something like it was an open challenge and i hopped the guardrail which that was fun to me i've always wanted to do the hop the guardrail deal and (laughs) and uh so i hopped the guardrail and i'm like oh here we go and i slide in and uh, I don't know how uh, PG this show is. It, but... you, can, you can say a few things. Thanks. Oh, I'll answer it a little bit. Uh, so uh, he, Joey Janella gave me this line. I, uh, I would probably wouldn't have come up with it on my own, you know. Uh, but he said uh, in the ring, the guy said, his name was Kyle the Beast, KTV. He said, uh, how old are you anyway? And uh, my line was, you want to know how old I am? Old enough to blank your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so that very big reaction. But then the actual match that we did, there was this move that I did. It was the, it's I call it a satellite code breaker. So like I'll, I'll go up to like the satellite DDT, but I'll switch it into a code breaker. And that like we hit it like perfectly. And then that got gift just call it and got posted online and that's really the clip that blew me up i guess in a way and uh that night actually um cody rhodes saw that um the young bucks saw that and then uh cody got my information from someone and i woke up the next morning with a text message from cody rhodes so uh and i thought that was a joke as well Mm. he was like cody rhodes i was like Yo, what? <laughs> but uh, we're in New York, just walking around New York, hanging out, being tourists and stuff. Me, my brother, and my dad, and uh, I'm just texting Cody Rhodes, and he invites me to come to All In and uh, do the Battle Royal. And then uh, he he tells me what I'll be getting paid, and he asked me if that's okay. And it was the most I've ever been paid for any sort of wrestling thing in, by, by a large sum. And uh, I was like, well, yeah, of course. But uh, I go in and uh, and I do it. And uh, about, I guess, a month and a half later, I break my leg in half. So, uh, but the Battle Royal went incredibly, incredibly well, I mean. And uh, I got a bunch of good spots with uh, with Bully Ray and and uh, Tommy Dreamer had a big push in what I was doing, and uh, he I think he's the reason that uh, I got the first elimination. I eliminated uh, Moose, I think it was, uh, and that was the first elimination, which was kind of crazy. But um, going on from that, uh, he texted me in, in like January, and I had broken my leg in October. I believe. So I'm very fresh. I have a rod in my leg, a new metal rod in my leg, and I'm nowhere near healed. So he texts me. He's like, hey, uh, are you going to be good by Double or Nothing, which is their Vegas one, this their first Vegas one that they had. He's like, "Uh, are you going to be good to go for the Battle Royal again? And I said, "Uh, I will be. And like, knowing if I really would be, but I told him, I said, hey, I'll be there. And uh, after that, they he... He was kind of texting in a way about doing more stuff going forward. And I, then I just straight up asked him, I was like, Hey, yo, are you, are you meaning like I'm going to be doing stuff with AEW? And he said, well, yeah. And I was like, Oh, okay. So I get on the shows and we're doing these shows and I'm meeting everybody and they formed the Jurassic Express uh, in 
Jacksonville uh, for, I want to say it was Fight for the Fallen or something, mm-hmm. or Fighter Fest, maybe. Maybe it's Fight for those. Yeah. But uh, they, uh, that night, actually, Nick ja- uh, Matt Jackson, we were all hanging out in that room, and he all of a sudden he stops mid conversation. He goes, Oh, we need to get you a contract, don't we? Hold on, we'll get that by like next week or something. And then, sure enough, next week I, I they were giving me a contract and everything for for AW, and that all happened just so fast. That was all within like five months. Wow, that that is a journey. That is yeah. a journey from waking up. To see, the funniest part, I think, too, is a blind text from Cody Rose because it doesn't <laughs> say Cody Rose texting you, so it's a random phone number, and you're like. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You know, I, I get phone. I get fo- empty phone calls all the time. I answer, and it's like someone just bought, a, you know, a car on Amazon with your money. It's like, no, they didn't. This is this is fake. <laughs> like, yeah, this is I, clearly fake. But the fact that Cody Rhodes is texting you and it's a, a number that you're not recognizing, obviously at first, so very, very interesting. And you, obviously, you got to join part of the, the the group, the first kind of initial roster and run. But you know, recently though, on Dynamite. They mentioned you on TV yeah. again, and obviously you probably got the texts, you probably got the phone calls, the emails, the tweets that Christian eventually turned heel, beating up uh, Jungle Boy, and then getting Luchasaurus on his side and bringing you up, saying like, you know, bringing you up. Remember what happened to Marco? Now that's either a good thing or a bad thing for you because now your name is out there, so everyone's talking about you. But at the same time, it's acknowledging that what happened to you was you don't work for AEW any longer. So hearing your name on TV and getting the text and the phone calls, how does that make you feel, especially in the context that it's used? I thought it, huh. how do I, <laughs> I, let me put it this way. I was not let aware. I was not aware that it was going to be said or anything or that or my name was going to be thrown out in any context because it hasn't been since October mm-hmm. the past year. And uh, for them to do it in that context, I thought it's kind of lame, but uh, you know, um, I mean, it makes sense though, in a way, you know, like mm-hmm. I was, and I was a part of that group before him. And what he's basically saying is he came in and got me fired. So in story sense, Love it. In real life sense, you know, hey, do I, you know what? It is what it is, I guess. Right. Do you feel, though, that Christian did come in in real life, not storyline? He came yeah. in, you know, because it's Christian. Everyone knows who he is from the WWE and all his years of work with TNA and so on and so forth. Do you feel like him coming in was a way to not oh, they weren't purposely trying to do it to you? but he took your spot because of his name recognition versus yours? I don't think that he necessarily took my spot because, uh, like, we are two different, completely different roles, for sure. Um, I was more of a hype guy, and he was more, and he's more of a, more of a, like, leader role. Mm -hmm. Like, here, I've been here, done this, let me show you how to get to the top type of role. And, uh, and like, I think that was cool. I think that was a cool concept, but I did not think that he fit with the group at all. Um, I didn't think he added any sort of dynamic really. Um, I think it would have been better to have him mentor us or really what it was, was him mentoring Jack, you know, like yeah. junk. And that's ultimately the the whole goal with that. And I, and you know, like they're, they're setting up Jack to do great things. You know, they're setting him up to have this great push right now mm-hmm. and great things. And I've known that he was going to do that from the start. He's one of my best friends that I made there. And like, we still talk to the day and he even texted me uh, when it happened and we talked about it a little bit, but uh, do, do I feel like he took my, do I feel like he did it intentionally? Is that what you're asking? 
I, I don't I don't think he intentionally did. I'm just wondering if someone there was a design there that you weren't aware of that, hey, we bring in a third person, but we're gonna bring in a third person that has a well, fourth person technically, um, has a bigger um I name guess value. name value to the group. So why do we need Marco if we have Christian? I think that's where it went for sure. I think that's where it was headed and like where it ended up. And do I think, I don't think that it was like that at first. I think it just kind of happened that way. I mm -hmm. think Shin wanted to work with Jungle Boy and that's, that was his way in. And uh, it just so happened to push me out of the way and like gradually see, like wean me out. And, you know, you, there's a certain point where you, could, where you just see stuff coming. Right. And like, I, I knew back in October that I was not, not, not a hundred percent. Like they hadn't told me anything, but I knew back in October, I wasn't going to be there much longer. You know, like I knew when my contract was expiring and I was like, they're not, there's, there's no reason for them to resign me right now. Now, why do you feel like there was no reason for them to resign you? I mean, I wasn't bringing anything to the table at the moment. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't adding anything to it. I wasn't bringing in any, audience or anything like and like, not to say that i didn't have a fan base or anything i have my fan base but like as in terms of making more for them mm -hmm. i wasn't that. but i will say i don't believe that i was put in a position to be able to do that as well so right i, I was one of my questions definitely is do you feel like there were opportunities there because it seems if you obviously been paying attention it seems like a lot of the original aew roster is being slowly trickled out and mm -hmm. and for this is just the opinion it seems on the internet for former wwe wrestlers and this is the same exact thing that happened at tna years ago and yeah. this isn't new this has happened wcw did the same exact thing so do you feel like originals the AEW originals i guess i'll call them like yourself are being were being pushed out because your 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 name value they feel like isn't as big as someone else like a keith lee or a swerve or people like that i think that there was a point where they got a taste of what that star power could do mm. you know mm -hmm. and you know it's kind of like a drug i guess in a way you you get a little bit and you're like ooh, that was cool that felt good. That was nice. Let's, let's, let's get a little more in here. Mm. So it just starts waterfalling and waterfalling. And you're like, Oh, this guy's not there anymore. Let's bring him in. And so that's kind of where it got you. And like, it wasn't that bad when I was like being put like weaned out, but, uh, it definitely, uh, got that way. It's definitely more that way now. It feels like Right. And I don't know if it's because this is me speaking. I don't know if it's because if you have a poster with CM Punk on the front versus, mm -hmm. and I, lo I love all these people too, but with versus Kenny Omega, there's a larger audience of fans who know who CM Punk is versus who Kenny Omega is. Mm -hmm. Then now there are hardcore wrestling fans, know both obviously, but the outside audience, families who are bringing their kids to events, see CM Punk on a poster or Brian Danielson, um, or even Christian, they see that and go, oh, I know that. I recognize that. I'm comfortable with that. I will go see this now versus a bunch of faces you don't recognize. Yeah. You know, so, it's kind of crazy that you say that. Like, I've noticed that more, like, since I was with AEW, like, the casual fan is not necessarily, like, they're not, they're not watching it for the same reasons, like, that I would watch it or like maybe that you would watch it mm -hmm. but uh you're right if they do see those faces they're definitely gonna be drawn to that for sure and i think like and that's why it happened like because those do, those guys do do bring in more better ratings you know at least for a while. i was gonna say because if you look at the numbers from say original look at, well the first year of aew versus the year we're in now mm -hmm. they're they're not <laughs> they're not very different the, yeah. maybe off by a few thousand here and there one week it's a million one week it's eight hundred thousand like there's not a giant jump now there are moments 
and you can take numbers and twist them to benefit you any way, which way you want. And for instance, CM Punk Rampage debut, huge numbers, right? What happened the week after? Whoop, fell off. So it may be that someone in that company believes that these former WWE wrestlers are going to help us. But if you look at the ratings, it's there's no difference. I have a feeling, I mean, I am not like, I was never, I've never have been a behind the scenes type guy. So I don't know what goes through these guys' minds when they're doing, making all these decisions. But um, I think that they, they plan, I feel like they plan for that initial pop, but then not necessarily where to go from there, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Now, there, there's a running joke on Twitter, it, obviously, if you're on it enough, where it's, oh, big announcement, we don't know what the matches are, but big announcement, big announcement tonight, big announcement, and then pop next week back to your 800,000. And again, nothing wrong with 800,000 people watching your show, but the running joke on Twitter is every time there's a big announcement, the ratings go up. Every time yeah. there's not a big announcement, they don't go up. So it, it, you might be on track there to see uh maybe it's maybe it's happening maybe it's not but um did you ever have any ideas for your character or dress express in general that you pitched that weren't ever listened to or were your ideas constantly listened to you had a you had tony khan's ear but they weren't going to get delivered so i actually uh i had this like i had this real weird block where like i didn't want to insert myself into places that I didn't feel I needed to be inserted. Mm -hmm. I had many ideas that never really got spoken up about. There was one and it would have been with Paul White though, um, uh, where me and him had talked a bit about doing an angle, maybe even starting it on like Rampage or or not Rampage, but uh, Dark just to see how it gets over but yeah. where i'm getting like beat just week after week and bullied and then he's on commentary and i'm getting bullied one week and finally he gets tired of it he throws his mic down and he comes down to the ring and like saves me and this was like him pitching it to me actually and like and he's like yeah and then we can form this like best buddy duo and like i will i'll be your best friend and he's like man i'll play it up so well he's like this is my best friend and he like started singing and then, but uh, he was that would have been like my dream angle right there, regardless of like where it was being posted. And he's like my favorite wrestler ever. So, all he, right, yeah, he legitimately yeah, he's... favorite wrestler of all time. So, and uh, just a question: Why is he your favorite wrestler of all time? Because everyone has reasons. Yeah. So uh, when I was younger, I loved like I loved seeing like Kane and the Big Show and Undertaker throw these people around and even Brock Lesnar like just throwing people around and just choke slamming and power bombing and suplexing and I wanted to do that I wanted to be that I wanted to be seven foot tall and go and step over the top rope and choke slam people and uh and you see how that turned out I didn't quite get to seven foot tall <laughs> but uh, my love for that style never went away and like big show was one that i guess i connect not connected to but like dove into more because his character felt more in depth like he was very he's very uh charismatic and he was able to portray like a a lot of character as well as being a monster i feel like and i absolutely fell in love with that and so I, uh, that's, that's why he's my favorite wrestler. Nice. Yeah. Again, he's, he's such a a good ambassador as well for any company he works for, because, you know, such a a tall man, he obviously has gone through struggles in his life where, you know, they don't make airplanes in in airplane bathrooms for Paul White, probably. So, uh, he's, he's had to suffer over the years, but, um, let's talk about something interesting. I think a lot of people want to know 
During the beginning of AEW, the WWE decided to suddenly make NXT go live as well on hmm. on, and that was like this big thing. And they want they went to NXT went two weeks ahead of AEW's debut, so you confuse the audiences. Uh, didn't work, obviously. But when you worked for AEW, was there a feeling amongst the wrestlers that you were at you know war with WWE and NXT at least because that's the that this feeling on Twitter is still there, this anger towards AEW, WWE. You can't like both, it seems. You have to only like one. I, I'm going to go on the record here and say I like both, personally. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there was definitely, like, a little bit of, like, hey, uh, screw you guys. Not not necessarily, like, a, a major one, mm-hmm. but uh, some, some people went back there were, like, really fighting hard to make make sure we were on top i guess um and then some of us were just like having fun like we're on tv we're living our dream but uh there's definitely like some like uh, tension i guess sometimes Yeah. yeah it was never never like there was never any meetings where we're like, oh, we're going to beat these guys, blah, blah, blah. It was more of like just talk backstage, like, oh, do you hear about this? Uh, well, what about this? And like, like more of just the talking amongst your peers type gossip, I guess. Yeah, because for so long when people would be on Twitter and you it would be like, I don't watch WWE, but I watch NXT. And I was like, That's the same company. And then when AEW showed up, though, it turned into like this – you're with us or against us type of uh, deal um, because the, the hate for WWE for so long of, of not having an option because impact wrestling kind of got jumbled up for a few years and, and they were kind of all over the place, but yeah, AW, there, there seems to be a consensus that I'm, I've talked to a lot of people like Wardlow and Thunder Rosa and uh, Evil Uno, Lynch Archer. I've asked them the same question and um, they kind of all said the same thing. We're like, yeah, there, there was a, a feeling of like, we need to, you know, take them down but not exactly that there was no meetings there was no meetings about this but the consensus was let's kind of show them we're better than them Mm -hmm. right which i'm assuming is a a locker room thing there was never a an official meeting or a memo or an email that went out Uh, no no there was not uh yeah it was definitely just all like i think it was probably passed down but it the uh, talk of the locker room for a very long time and it definitely it died down um but uh they were very excited and and like almost an in your face type way when like we would be on top and like went in the ratings and, and i'm sure you saw like the boasting online so yes yes i did uh Twitter shows me all, but yet there was only like two weeks out of this entire run of AEW and NXT together against each other like that, where they actually, NXT only beat AEW like twice maybe. So there wasn't really, people started saying, oh, so when's the night wars? Well, when someone wins every single time, is that really a war? It's more about um, that Simpsons meme, like, please, please leave him alone. (laughs) So... Well, we'll have to see on that. But um, what was your relationship like with Tony Khan? Did you actually have one? Because I've talked to other people and they're like, oh, he's very open. He's in your face. He'll, he'll give you what you want when you need it. He has an open ear. But did you get that same um, reception? Yeah, yeah. No, like he really is like a really nice dude. Really like easy to confront and like talk to. Um, I never had any issues with him literally i never had any issues with him like there was a time when like we were like talking every day not on the not every day but every day we'd be at work mm-hmm. but there's a time where like we were we, we would there would be like groups of us like hanging out and he would be there and like just hang out with all of us and like it was not as big of a group as it is now so there was a lot less people like in like just the hangout mm-hmm area i guess and um he was he's very like he he wants to hear ideas um does he always go with them (laughs) no but uh because you know at the end of the day it's what he wants to do but uh like he was very like approachable and 
easy to talk to. So when your contract though wasn't, I guess, renewed, was there a discussion with him or did you talk to somebody else about the situation? That is actually where the communication kind of lacked a lot is when like times started running out. Um, I did go, I, and I went to say this, as I was saying, uh, we were close, but uh, it, there was a time where like we weren't either, you know, and then it like from there, it kind of just, we were, we would see each other at work and be like, oh, hey, hey, hey. but uh, I never had any, I never really had any communication at the end. Um, so I didn't know if I was getting let go or renewed or anything. Um, I sent out an email and didn't get a response. I, uh, I texted him. I didn't get a response. And like, um, but when it, about a month before it happened, I got, I did get a call and like, I got told not by him, but, uh, I did get the phone call that I wasn't going to be renewed. And then I, I did text him. I was like, Hey man, I just want to thank you for all the opportunities because it was a fantastic opportunity. I mean, I'm 25 years old. And I was with the company for three years and uh, I had a blast. I lived my dream. So I wanted to thank him for that. And, uh, and he did text me back and he was like, Hey man, uh, thank you for everything. I'm sorry. We couldn't get a spot for you moving forward. But um, I did. And I did tell him, I was like, uh, maybe we'll work together one day in the future. And he was like, and he did say something to that. And he was like, um, there's, a, there's a possibility of that. So that doesn't mean <laughs> at all that it is going to happen. I'm not, right. my, uh, not holding on to that, but you know, if it does, it does, if it doesn't, I'm, I'm good. So, the, so, you know, the door is open, but it's interesting that he, you were concerned about your position and where you were going to be in the next few months. He wasn't responding to you at all, but once it was official that you were done and you text him, he texts you back. Yeah. And, you know, of course, that's weird. And it's kind of him in a, in a way, too. So I guess I guess it'd be hard for you to write back anger after, you know, the opportunity you were given. But it's a little unfortunate that communication wasn't there for you when you needed it, because if you were told the reason why now were you told it's a financial thing, it's been on the spot for you, no, it's, you know, create, like what was the exact reason why i mean i was told budget budget reasoning and that plans had just changed for what they wanted to do Hmm. interesting yeah so that was really the only thing they told me so it was kind of a general let go like oh hey we don't we're not able to do this like right and obviously other people like Joan Janella and, um, you know, St- uh, Stu uh, Grayson, the, a few other individuals from the initial AEW run, obviously, probably all got the same, um, I'm guessing, because I haven't talked to any of these people yet, the same response of, oh, we don't have a place, oh, it's a money thing. Yeah. But, but yeah, oh. the, the stories drop online about how much money you're spending on so-and-so, and you're ca- being told, hey, we don't have money for you. Or money. So it's like you're probably seeing what's happening with bigger stars coming in, making big money. But where's that money coming from? Like clearly it's coming from your contract. Yeah. And, you know, like that's definitely stuff that runs through your head. But, uh, you know, ultimately, like I generally try not to get too upset about that type of stuff. Like I try not to. You know, there definitely have been days where I've been what 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 the hell like what's going on um like i had and like now that it's kind of done and over with i haven't really had that and to be real honest i don't really have any desire to work there right now like Mm -hmm. i i want to be careful i word that because that's not me saying that i don't want to work for them ever i just but like right now it's kind of fresh still you know, there would be, I don't want to, I want to see what else is out there, I guess, in a way. Yeah. And so have you been contacted by, you know, obviously you've been running the Indies, which is awesome. 
but has like WWE, NWA, Impact Wrestling, has anyone contacted you from these companies and saying like, just, just feeling you out and saying, Hey man, you know, what's going on? Are you interested? No, not really. No. Um, yeah, no, not really. I, See, but that, I have, that surprises me. Really? I, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I just haven't put myself out there much and that's kind of my fault. So I just think that this, this is me. It doesn't even matter if, if it's, you know, you in general, if somebody, from another company out of AEW, WWE is out, you have, you have some of that AEW dust on you still like the, Ooh, yeah. So impact wrestling, I think would need someone who can bring some uh, more credibility, like X division, things like that. I'm just shocked. That's me personally. I'm shocked because you just worked for one of the second or to some people, the, the number one biggest company of wrestling and, and no one, reached out to you but obviously let's talk about your outside projects though because you are running the indies right now so wh what have you been up to where, where are you going where are you going next um i'm actually uh i got my own promotion coming up in here where i around where i live in memphis and uh we're uh i think we're starting here in september we're still trying to come up with everything and do everything come up with but we haven't we haven't like released any posters or anything, but uh, that is coming soon. But I am going to be starting a promotion here, and uh, I'm going to be doing that. And I also help out a lot in uh, with the show in Missouri as well um, with the Booker there. And so I've, I've been kind of getting into that role, I guess, trying to learn that type of stuff. Uh, with wrestling, I'm, I've slowed down a little bit. Not gonna lie. Um, just to kind of focus on a few other things like my music a little bit and then my like the booking and running that type of stuff as well. Um, who's to say what will be happening with, in a year from now? I could be wrestling. I could not be wrestling, you know, and, it's, and uh, it's been a thought that's crossed my mind to not wrestle for a while. But it's kind of hard to say that I'm going to do, you know. Well, you, I think in one retrospect, you did achieve your dream at such, a, at such a young age. So some people chase their dreams to the end, till they're, till they're no longer here on earth. So you achieved yours at such a young age that I can imagine mentally, it might be difficult for you to find a new dream to reach for because of what you've already accomplished. Yeah. And it's kind of weird, like getting back out into it's, it feels like stepping into a whole new world, like because mm. you're not being there and doing that for like every week, and it's it's odd. But I will say I do. I don't know. Where do I? How how is I going to go with this? My train of thought just went. <laughs> well, I, again, I think it's you're very passionate for what you're thinking right now. So, you know, take the time you need. I, I imagining it's kind of a, a mental strain to put together, you know, what you did already and then what you're trying to do next, because every day was one, you were doing something for so long and then you got, then it's gone. Now, right. you get a, now you have to create a new life schedule. Yeah. And like, here's my thing. I want, I could have planned so much better had they had that communication at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, but uh, I'm doing well, like I'm doing fine. I'm wrestling still for a living. So I'm doing all that. And, uh, you know, there's a part of me that kind of wants to find a new journey and see what else I can get myself into. Uh, I never went to college because wrestling just sort of happened real fast. And, uh, I would like to go back and like get a degree in something, maybe like a business degree or something. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's again, you've you've done so much with so little time already on this earth. So there's plenty more to accomplish. There's plenty more to accomplish. I'm gonna go with that. Actually, I was not. Thank you. You got my mind back on track. Good. But <laughs> but uh, no, like. 
I have done like a lot already with my life. Like I've lived in another country. I've worked for, for a wrestling company on television. I had a contract with them and I got to live my dream. I got to do everything I wanted to do. And if I were to go out and be done, I would be fine with it because I did do a lot. Now, I don't, here's the thing with that though, is like, I don't necessarily want to be done with wrestling, but I don't want to be in the, like working with stuff and like even training people maybe down the road. And, you know, I got the business, the, the promotion coming up. So. So let's talk about your one final question, your goals for the year. Obviously you have a wrestling promotion opening up, but is that your ultimate goal this year to accomplish that giant goal of starting your own organization? It, that probably is my biggest goal right now is, is starting that up and getting it running and having a little bit of eyes on it, you know, getting a few eyes on it. It'd be cool. It'll be cool once it starts going. I think it'll have a little bit of initial buzz um, once I announce it. And then hopefully I can keep that up, you know, not, uh, not get that initial pop and just not know where to go from there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh oh my God. Um, Talk about poking someone without actually doing it. Oh, I love it so much. Marco, Stunt, thank you so much for being here on MVC's 10 Count. I've been Steve Ball. He's been Marco Stunt. We had a great conversation, folks. Have a great day. Bye.